Yeah. 
I believe. I believe. I believe. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, my Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. Suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. The third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Amen. Bible readers, it's Miss Sarah here and I have my friend Clementine here with me today. Hello friends! Hey Miss Sarah, do you like to watch football? Well, um, depends on who's playing. Why do you ask? Oh, is it because the Super Bowl is this weekend? Yeah, I love the Super Bowl for the snacks. <laughs> oh, me too. It is so fun to watch the, the crowds cheering for their favorite team and rooting them on. The players are so focused and, and they want to win that trophy that they can't think of anything else. Oh yeah, yeah, that's kind of cool. The players can look around and see everyone rooting for them to score. I bet that would feel awesome. I am sure that would. Hey, we can actually do that for each other. What? What do you mean? Well, last week, Miss Alex and Bernard talked about the church and how we should care for and love people. This week, the line in the Apostles' Creed says that we believe in the communion of saints. Uh, what? Uh, communion of saints. So communion means um, sharing and being together. And, and saints are anyone who trusts in Jesus as their Lord. So communion of saints, it just means togetherness, sharing between God's family. Oh, well, thanks for breaking that down for me. Absolutely, Clementine. Hey, let's stand, let's sing, let's worship God together, and then we will talk more. the 
the communion of the saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. This is what I believe. Friends, we believe in the communion of saints. Remember, that just means togetherness and sharing among God's family. Oh, oh, my family does that on Sundays. After going to church, we get together with some other families. We eat food together and play and spend time together. Oh, that's great, Clementine. You know, the Bible says that, that we should gather together. We should encourage each other and we should cheer each other on. Let's open our Bibles to the New Testament and we can get a closer look. So friends, if you have a Bible and you wanna open up to the book of Hebrews, in the New Testament, that's toward the end of the Bible with me, you can, or you can follow along on the screen as I read to you. So I've got my Bible open here to the book of Hebrews. We're in chapter 10, verses 24 and 25. It says, let us consider one another to provoke love and good works, not neglecting to gather together as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging each other and all the more as you see the day approaching. Friends, this verse shows us that because Jesus rescued us from the penalty and the power of sin, we should gather together with other gather together with other believers and encourage each other. Oh, hey, that's kind of like the fans at the Super Bowl. They encourage each other. What was that part about love and good works? Well, well, good question. So without Jesus, our sin, it separates us from God. And, and, and sin is choosing our way and disobeying God. Right. But through Jesus and through the power of the Holy Spirit, we can make choices that are pleasing to God. So that means our choices are no longer about about what we want, but they're about what God wants. When we encourage other followers of Jesus, we're reminded of how God wants us to live, how we can care for our community, and how we can support and love the people around us. Oh, so we help others love people and do good things, and people help us love others and do good things. We all help each other. Exactly. So God rescues us for the good of others. Let's take a short drawing break. Let's draw a picture of the communion of saints. Will you all draw with me? Let's go. Hey everyone, I can't wait to draw with you today. 
you look at our symbol at the bottom, there are lots of people in this picture and there's a lot of detail. So instead of drawing this exact picture, I'd love for you to draw your own picture. So here's what we're going to do. In this space, I want you to draw a picture of yourself and two other people who believe in Jesus. So that could be your, if you have maybe friends at home you want to include, or family, or classmates that you're with today, or your classroom teacher, um, or if you are new to church and just learning about Jesus, I would just love for you to draw two people that are special to you in your life. So let's get drawing. I'm going to do mine, and yours is going to look different because yours is going to be special to you. So let's take a few minutes and draw our own pictures. All right, there's mine. I've got me in the middle and I have two of my friends and I'm going to head, go ahead and add some color. Feel free to keep drawing if you'd like or you can color with me. All right, there's my picture. We would love to see yours. Have a grown up at home, share your picture with us. You can email it, you can send it on social media, you can show us in the hallways. We would love to see what you drew. Let's get back to the message. Okay, I'm going to ask you some questions and you will have five seconds to shout out the answer. Are you ready? Number one, who made you? God made me. Number two, what does trusting in Jesus save us from? The penalty and power of our sin. Number three, what is the church? God's family. Number four, what is the communion of saints?
the togetherness and sharing of God's family. And number five, what is a saint? Anyone who trusts Jesus as Lord and turns from sin. How'd you do? Did you learn something new? Were you reminded of something true, pure, and lovely? Okay, let's get back to the message. Welcome back, Bible readers. Okay, so before the break, we were talking about how we believe in the communion of saints, the togetherness and sharing of God's people. Hey, Clementine, did you know that we can even look to saints who are no longer alive? Oh my lens, no I did not. How do we look at them if they're not here anymore? It's <laughs> a good question. Well, we can look to how they lived their lives as encouragement. So the Bible tells us that living a life for Jesus, it's not always gonna be easy. You know, and, and so in hard times, we can see how faithful people before us, how they kept their eyes on Jesus. And we can use that to encourage us. Wait, I think I know a Bible verse about this in the book of Hebrews. You're right. Hey, Bible readers, we're gonna take a look in the Bible again in the book of Hebrews, chapter 12, verses one and two. So again, you can follow along with me or if you have a, a Bible nearby and you want to open it up, you can do that too. So let's read. Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 and 2 says, Therefore, since we also have such a large cloud of witnesses surrounding us, let us lay aside every hindrance and the sin that so easily ensnares us. Let us run with endurance the race that lies before us, keeping our eyes on Jesus the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. For the joy that lay before him, he endured the cross, despising the shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. So this verse was written to encourage people to keep looking to Jesus, even when things are hard or, or sad things happen that we have a rescuer who already conquered death and he is seated at the right hand of God. Whoa! Hey, I remember that part of the creed. What does it mean when it says the great cloud of witnesses? Well, remember, uh, a saint is anyone that trusts Jesus as Lord. And so that would be anyone from the past anyone who is alive now and anyone that will be alive in the future. So the great cloud of witnesses are the saints from the past who are alive with Jesus right now. That is so cool. They can encourage us because we are all joined together by the Holy Spirit. That's right. So the communion of saints means that we have things, special things in common that we share. Um, we can encourage each other, we can give to each other, and we can remind each other of the forever hope we have in Jesus, no matter how hard life gets. Friends, let's read our memory verse. And I would love for you to read along with me. Would you do that? First Peter 3.15 says, but in your hearts, regard Christ the Lord as holy, ready at any time to give a defense to anyone who asks you for a reason for the hope that is in you. Friends, if you trust in Jesus as Lord, you are a saint. God has given us this huge family called the church and it's filled with people all over the world who trust in Jesus and we all need each other. Oh man, that is so cool. Before this, I'd never heard of the communion of saints. It's cool to think about all the people from the past that trusted Jesus and all the people who trust Jesus now and all the people 
who will hopefully one day trust Jesus. I like that too. And that's why we've been learning our memory verse. When we know what we believe, we can share it with other people. My heart is, is hoping that every person knows Jesus and that God's family just grows and grows and grows. Me too. I want to tell everyone about him. And, and we can do that together, friends. We can do that together and we can encourage each other. We can cheer each other on. We can remind each other of the hope we have in Jesus. He is our rescuer. Okay, let's do our takeaway for, for the week. So I'll read it first and have you repeat it after me. I believe that everyone in the church needs each other. Bible readers, I had so much fun reading from the Bible and learning about it with you all today. Remember, as the church, people who believe in Jesus as Lord, we can encourage each other and we can share God's love with the world. Hey, don't forget to tell your grown-ups what you learned about God today. That's right. Okay, let's pray together. You ready? Dear God, thank you for giving us the communion of saints for other believers who trust in you, who know you, who want to know you more. Um, please help us to remember to encourage each other, to um to gather together when we can and to uh, cheer each other on as we are learning more about you and we are sharing with others about the hope that they have in Jesus. We love you so much. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Bye, everyone. See you next time.